would you like a drink? No. Oh, come on, have a, a little. Late in the interview, Marilyn began drinking champagne, and the more she drank, the more angry and defensive she became. She spilled out all the hurt over her treatment by Hollywood during 15 years in the movies. To me, she was like a record stuck in a groove. She felt they had never treated her like a star. Her anger really flashed when I asked her, very innocently, I thought, how she cranked herself up for her acting role. You know, the, the business of uh, you cranking yourself up to appear before the camera is, is part of what you're doing. I don't you know? crank anything. You know, I'm not a model T. Yeah, I don't crank. I don't know, but... I, I, I think that's kind of disrespectful to kind of refer to it that way. We are not machines, no matter how much they want to say we are, we are not. I want to be an artist, an actress with integrity. When I'm older, then I'll play other kinds of parts. My teacher, Lee Strasberg, has always said to me, you know, I say, I said, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm a little nervous. He says, when you're not, give up. <laughs> you know, because nervousness indicates sensitivity. I guess I think just go out there, you know, that's all we do. You know, go out there and do it. But, but it's, it's a real struggle. I mean, I really have to struggle. You've read there was some actor that once said about me that kissing me was like kissing Hitler. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, well, I think that's, you know, his problem. Gee. And if I really have to do intimate love scenes with an individual who really uh, has these kind of feelings towards me, then my fantasy can come into play. In other words, out with him, in with somebody else. There's somebody else there, not him. He was never there. I think, in fact, the public would be quite disillusioned the way the industry treats its stars. Remember when I got the part in Gentleman Before Blonde? Jane Russell, she was the brunette in it, and I was the blonde. She got $200,000 for it. And I got my $500 a week, but to me that was considerable. But the only thing was, I couldn't get a dressing room. And I said, uh, I really got to this kind of a level. I said to them, I said, look, after all, I am the blonde, and this gentleman prefer blondes. <laughs> because they always kept saying, remember, you're not a star. I said, well, whatever I am, I'm the blonde. <laughs> I mean, it got to that. I'm starting to sound paranoid or something. I don't think I am. I think that every weakness is exaggerated. A lot of people have real quirky problems. They wouldn't dare have anyone know. But one of my problems is that I'm late. <laughs> well, for instance, I, I guess they think that uh, why I'm late, they have to do with some kind of arrogance. And uh, I think it's, it's the opposite of arrogance, just as a starter. Let's start with that. It's the opposite. I mean, the things they send out about me uh, from this corporation over here will leave nameless. And then... And I've never lost sight of the fact that I am not at a studio at any time for discipline or to be disciplined if you have a cold how dare you have a cold i mean the executives can get cold and stay home for you know forever and phone it in but how dare you get a cold marilyn refused to acknowledge any responsibility for missing so many days on the set at fox she claimed she was sick but the studio just didn't believe her and in the midst of it all, Marilyn took off two more days to travel from Hollywood to New York to sing Happy Birthday to President Kennedy, whom she spoke of rather coyly, I thought, as a complete stranger. I was honored uh, when they asked me to appear at Madison Square Garden. In the history of show business, perhaps there has been no one female 
who meant so much, who has done more. Hush, you know, in the middle of a place. Would you like that? Oh, my God. Yeah, if, if I'd been wearing a slip, I would have been the slide to be showing or something. <laughs> the late Marilyn Monroe. So what's kind of this hush squat there? Oh, my God, what if no sound comes out? <laughs> and then you'll think, my God, I'll sing this song if it's the last thing I'll ever do. You know? after having had a happy birthday sung to me in such a sweet open way. Did we tell you? Afterwards, they had some kind of a reception because I never did see the food. <laughs> but maybe that was in another part of the place. And I had met um, the Attorney General briefly, uh, so it was good to see a, you know, a smiling, friendly face. <laughs> Less than three weeks later, Marilyn was fired from Something's Gotta Give. To Fox, Madison Square Garden was the last straw. She had been absent 21 of 33 shooting days, and to them she was obviously unstable and falling apart. Marilyn was exhausted. She had drunk a full bottle of champagne, and she had barely eaten anything. And she continued to paint herself as the victim. Fame is also a burden. An industry... I don't think should behave like, let's say, a mother whose child maybe has, uh, let's say, let's just say the words is run out in front of a car, so what do they do to the child? But start, instead of clasping the child to them, they start beating up on the child. They feel that it gives them some kind of a privilege to walk up to you and say anything to you. So, uh, at least... It's something that, uh, let's say, I experienced. So it's not just that, uh, okay, fame will go by. Uh, you know, so long, I, I, I've had you, fame. Yeah. If it goes by, I told you it was fickle. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to come off on tape, but I know what I mean. Really, it's great. Well, I hope we got something here. <laughs> <laughs> But please don't make me look like a joke. <laughs> Those were the last words she said to me. I said goodbye, and as I walked down the driveway, I looked back for a second. Marilyn was framed in the door, and she waved and called, Hey, thanks. I went back to New York and wrote the piece, and it appeared in Life magazine in the August 3rd issue. On August 5th, the phone rang. It was a reporter telling me that Marilyn was dead. I was dumbfounded. Marilyn had obviously been a woman in pain, but I never saw any sign that this was a woman giving her last interview, a woman on the verge of suicide. In the 30 years that have passed since then, I've listened to those tapes a dozen times to see if I somehow missed some clues. I still don't know the answer. Miss Monroe has suffered from psychiatric disturbance for a long time. Mood changes were abrupt and unpredictable. In our investigation, we have learned that Miss Monroe had often expressed wishes to give up, to withdraw, and even to die. On more than one occasion in the past, when disappointed and depressed, she had made a suicide attempt using sedative drugs. On the basis of all the information obtained, it is our opinion that the case is a probable suicide. Marilyn Monroe, Hollywood's most flamboyant blonde since Jean Harlow, went to her tomb in a plain dress today, following simple funeral services attended by only a handful of friends and relatives. 
Allen's body was dressed in a plain green dress of a light shade which she obtained in Florence, Italy. She lay in solid bronze caskets lined with champagne-colored velvet. Marilyn Monroe has found thirsty from the many personal sorrows that afflicted her life, both private and public. Her resting place, not too far from the movie mills where she began her meteoric rise to stardom.